the world's a dangerous place. Get the industry's original and most trusted laser sighting system from Crimson Trace. A laser and light systems will enhance your effectiveness and help keep you and your family out of harm's way. Lock and load. It's time to load up on some intellectual ammunition with Tom Gresham's Gun Talk. It doesn't matter if you learn to shoot with Daniel Boone or you're brand new. You're welcome here. This is the original national talk show about guns. And Tom Gresham is your guide through the maze of ballistics and politics. So grab your phone and call in right now. 866-825-5486. Or just dial 1-TOM-TALK-GUN. Now, here's Tom. Welcome back to another hour of Tom Gresham's Gun Talk. Now broadcasting on over 200 great radio stations across America. The number one national voice in defense of your Second Amendment rights. To be on the air with Tom, call us now. 866-825-5486 or 1-TOM-TALK-GUN. Now, here's Tom Gresham. Happy Fourth of July weekend! I am so glad that you could spend a little bit of it with me. I'm uh, well. We get a chance to chat about well, the Second Amendment, our government, our country, your safety and security. And I specifically like to talk about your safety and security. We talked for a little bit about the the story where Lynn Russell, former CNN anchor, and her husband, she basically was a distraction. Smart, smart lady. Of course, as I say, she's. Uh, She's actually a bodyguard, does uh, high-risk VIP protection work, heck of a shot, uh, martial arts, black belt, uh, at least two, maybe more forms of martial arts, her husband, sp- former special forces, and we talked about that. But part and parcel of that I want to talk about is being prepared, being aware, being alert, talk about avoidance, all of those things we've talked about for many, many years. And one of the things you know you've heard me talk about for many years is if you are preparing to take care of yourself and your family, and you say, okay, I'm responsible, I'm going to get the training, I'm going to get a gun or more than one gun, I'm going to carry a gun, or I'm going to have one at home, and I'm going to know the rules, I'm going to know the law, I'm going to do it all right, and I said, yes, but. That's all great, but there's also a yes, but in that. And that is, and you've heard me say this over and over again, even if you do everything right, it can cost you a lot of money. If they put a medal on you and say, good job, you did great, fabulous job, it could still cost you fifty, dollars $100,000 to defend yourself. You don't know what's coming, but you need to prepare for that second fight. And I've talked about it a good bit. So, Joining me to talk about that is a fellow who knows a lot about this. Alan Chandler was, is a retired uh, lieutenant colonel in the U.S. Army, former JAG attorney. He was deputy director of the Army's Criminal Law Division. He also worked as a felony prosecutor for the Dallas County District Attorney's Office. He's now with uh, Firearms Legal Protection. Alan, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Tom. How are you doing? Happy Fourth. Uh, thank you. Happy Fourth to you. Um, as a f- Former prosecutor, felony prosecutor, do you disagree with my uh, assertion that if you do everything right, it can still cost you a ton of money? Absolutely have to agree with that. Uh, I've seen time after time, three and a half years of the DA's office in Dallas alone, you see situations where people lawfully protect themselves with firearms only to be you know, taken downtown. Um, some of them even have to spend a week in jail. And sometimes you'll have situations where uh, the individual up into the grand jury, they have to make the decision as to whether or not you're going to be released. You know, so wow. just when you defend yourself, you have to worry about the second part of defending yourself. Defending yourself in the home of the firearm is only the first part of that process. What would be, in your experience, having watched this, not just uh, at the, in Dallas, but also in, in the Army, you're just rough advice to somebody to say, okay, here are some things you can do on the front end to help yourself to make sure you can get through the, what I call the aftermath of the legal fight, or we call it fight number two. What can a person do to try to minimize those effects on the back end? Well, it's an education process, Tom. Um, The first part of the education process is knowing how to use your weapon. second part Mm -hmm. of the education process is knowing when to use your weapon. 
And if you know the when to use your weapon, <clears throat> it's a little easier to articulate um, to police and those who arrive on the scene when there's been a shooting to explain, you know, here's what happened. Um, and what we do is we, add, we tell folks that, you know, you make the 911 call and then you call us. And Firearms Legal Protection is a legal defense membership services program, and we have criminal law board-certified attorneys, attorneys who specialize in firearm-related cases, who will take your call right after you call 911 and refresh your memory on that education piece. You know, why did you fire the weapon? Typically, you're using deadly force to defend yourself from deadly force. Somebody breaks in your home at night, um, you know, you have the right to defend yourself with deadly force. Someone comes into your house with a gun, you know, house, residence, home, where you have the right to defend yourself with deadly force. It's very important that you know that. And so mm-hmm. it's very important that you explain it properly. And so we help in that. Okay. I mean, obviously some are going to say, well, gee, you're, you're coaching them up to, to lie. That's not what you're saying at all. No, not at all. We're teaching you. That's part of that education piece. You know, our members need to mm-hmm. know how to use the weapon, but using it and using it in the right situation is, is important as well. You know, our well, members well, are if folks, I, if, 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 if if I may, what I think what you're saying is actually among the other skill set that you need, the words that you use when the police first arrive may determine where you live for the next few days, weeks, or months. Absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. Um, we have people who, um, I'll give you a good example. Had an individual in here in Dallas who um, was awoken about 4 o'clock in the morning. Um, and there was someone break into his um, garage. He went out with his weapon, and he discharged the weapon and shot the uh, burglar three times. burglar escaped, basically. Mm-hmm. So a uh, firearm's been discharged. Um, the guy is taken in by the police. You know what happened? I fired my, fired my weapon. Well, how do we know what happened? You know, we only have your word as to what happened. The guy's gone. They found mm-hmm. a blood trail later where this individual was. But the facts and circumstances the police act and rely upon are those facts and circumstances that you give them. And when you are, I mean, not everybody fires their gun at somebody every day. I mean, the military, we do that, but not every day either. You know, you have a homeowner who's sitting in his house, um, maybe has fired that thing once in the last couple of years. And it's a very emotional situation, you know. And so you, you know, the typical person uh, goes jibber jabbish. Like, I don't know, what, you know, it was this, it all happened uh-huh. so fast, I don't recall what happened, those kind sure. of things. Right, right. So talking right. it through with an attorney helps to calm them down and say, okay, look, you know, what happened, let's get to the bottom of it, and let's give your best foot forward when the police come, you know, and, and tell them exactly what happened, you know, truthfully. Okay, from a legal standpoint, sense. there's nothing wrong with uh, talking with your attorney before the police arrive. Absolutely not. It's, it's, one, it's one of the rights that you're given as a U.S. citizen. Okay, so, I mean, first you call 911, you tell them what happened, you need the police, and maybe you need medical help, depending on the situation, and then you hang up and you, and, and they're going to, here's the other thing, aren't they going to want you to stay on the phone with them? Uh, typically, they like to do that, but um, the thing that's most important for you is to get the police there. So you want to identify where you are and who you are, mm-hmm. and then when the police arrive, you want to make sure that your weapon is down, you know, so they're, mm-hmm. not, they're not arriving on the scene and seeing perhaps... Uh, you know, a body or shots that have been fired and you're standing there holding the weapon, you know, waving the weapon around. That's yeah, good... yeah they, on the radio, they got the call, said, look, somebody's been shot. There's somebody has a gun. They roll in. There's somebody with a gun. Hello. So you don't want to be that guy. You do not, no, you do not want to be that guy. And that's part of talking to the attorney also. Because like I said, when you discharge your weapon, you know, if you're not doing that on a daily basis, you, you're not thinking clear. And if you just shot at somebody, that's a very, very emotional time. That's not a time to be thinking, gosh, what should I do? How does this work? Right. You know, um, you should have that down. And the attorney, you know, when you call us, we help to remind you that, hey, you want to make sure you put the gun down. Um, you know, what you else do you guys sure. do? I mean, do you, do you provide, like, legal protection uh, or uh, legal services representation also? We do, yeah. And um, when our members are, when they call us, they're in contact with an attorney right away. And, and what's good about that is because when we track you, you know, where are you going? Are the police taking you downtown? You know, we'll send somebody uh. to assist you. You know, you're not going in alone. That's the other thing that a lot of people um, get into trouble with. They go alone. And when you're arrested by the police or you're held for questioning, they put you in a room and you wait. And this isn't like a five-minute wait so you can tell your story. You're sitting there for, it could be one, two, three, six hours. It depends how busy they are, what else is going on. 
and you're sitting that whole time going, oh, my God, I'm alone. And you're going through all this in your mind, like, oh, what did I do? How, how did this happen? Blah, blah, blah. Who's there out there? My family. What, you know, you're thinking about all these things. And having somebody that you can confide in, a criminal attorney, a specialized criminal attorney, to calm you down, walk you through the process, and then be there with you through the process, it's invaluable. Man, well, I, I can see how it would be. All right, now, firearms legal uh, protection, it's not a – how old is this organization? How long have you guys been around? About a year. About a year. So it's pre- fairly new. Yep. And you got uh, – now, do you have lawyers everywhere? How does this work? We do. We have lawyers in all 50 states. In fact, that was why I was brought on board. And not just to get any lawyer. Um, we don't want a box lawyer. We want somebody who understands you know, criminal law. Um, mm-hmm. I've been doing this for 30 years. Um, you know, I'm licensed in California and Texas. And I've also, in the military, had two jobs that prepared me for this one, and that is um, I was a regional defense counsel and had to take care of 55 attorneys in eight states um, when I was a mm-hmm. defense counsel for the Army. That was Region 8, Alaska, the West Coast, Hawaii, and all that. So I'm familiar with managing attorneys. And so we look for – we're not looking for a patent attorney or when somebody does wills and trusts who has a part-time <laughs> gig can help us out. Right. We want people who – understand criminal law. We want people who get the Second Amendment. We want people who typically are firearms owners. In fact, I'm, I'm not sure if 100% of our attorneys are firearms owners, but we're pretty close to that. And oh, then we want okay. folks who have gone through this process before. Not, I just graduated from law school and I had my first criminal case, so I'm ready to take this on. Yeah. But people who've been doing this for a while, usually public defenders and former prosecutors are the folks that we're looking for. And those have a good track record. Okay, and the uh, the website, if people want more info, is firearmslegal.com? It is. Yep. Okay, firearmslegal.com. Uh, I, all the information is there. You find out. I, I firmly believe that people need to back, you know, you need to back up and everything. And, boy, when you're walking into the jungle, you need a guide. And when you walk into the legal system, you sure as heck need a guide in one of these situations. That's kind of what you're describing is, you know, you guys can take it by the hand and say, okay, come with me. I've been here before. We're going to take care of you. Exactly. But, you know, the the other thing, too, is you talked about why do you need an attorney right away. You know, like, well, if you're just telling mm-hmm. the truth, what happened? Why should that be a problem? Well, sometimes um, when you're telling that story, you're being greeted by an officer who's just arrived in a shooting, and he may have come from a second shooting or may have been involved mm-hmm. in a DWI or some other traumatic event that evening also. And he's, you know, it's the end of his shift or her shift, and they're trying to we can't figure this out on scene. We're going to take him downtown. We'll make him sit, all that kind of stuff. So, and and it's not a knock on the police. They are doing an admirable job, but they can't be everywhere and satisfy all things. And so we're here to make sure that, you know, you know what your rights are, that you articulate your story the best way possible, that you tell what happened and we're there to help you. I mean, that's what we're really for. Exactly. That'll do it. All right, it's firearmslegal.com. Alan, thank you so much for your time here and your advice. I appreciate it. It's good information, man. Thank you, Tom. Have a wonderful day. All right, you too. 866-TALK-GUN, 866-TALK-GUN. Got a call, comment, question, a range report. We sure like to have that also. And if you're just wanting to know, well, almost anything has to do about guns, so we'll either have an answer for you or we'll make it up. It doesn't matter. <laughs> 866-TALK-GUN. Accurate, powerful, consistent. At Double Tap Ammunition, we offer 364 loads in 83 calibers that give you exactly what you've been looking for. Try us out at www.doubletapammo.com and use the promo code GUNTALK for 10% off your order. Attacks happen every day. How will you react? See real people put into real-life criminal attack situations on First Person Defender. Discover what works and what doesn't. Kidnapping, ATM robbery, home invasion, and other attacks. Learn how to save your life and the lives of your family. Get the entire first season on DVD at ShopGunTalk.com. Get prepared. ShopGunTalk.com. In the war on terror, fighting crime in the streets, in competition, and homes around the world, one name in firearms stands out, Sig Sauer. 
Our pistols and rifles are renowned for their unfailing performance. This same commitment to excellence can be found in our line of SIGTAC accessories and the training offered by the SIG Sauer Academy. For unmatched quality, reliability, and innovation when it counts, choose SIG Sauer. Visit SIGSauer.com today. The 45 Auto, also known as the 1911, is the standard other defensive pistols are measured against. No matter what pistol you carry, techniques developed around the 1911 are vital. You know you need training. And you know your concealed carry class definitely was not training. Now Gun Talk presents an exciting DVD, Fighting with the 1911 with Tiger McKee. Tiger's unique training style will have you drawing, moving, shooting, and running your gun better, no matter what style pistol you prefer. At ShopGunTalk.com, you can order our DVDs of Tiger's instruction. ShopGunTalk.com also has a two-DVD set, including Concealed Carry One. Get both for the information you know you need. This really is life and death. ShopGunTalk.com has DVDs, books, and other essential gear. ShopGunTalk.com. That's ShopGunTalk.com. At Double Tap Ammunition, we hand inspect every round that we make and we use only the best components to give you the best ammunition on the market. Try us out at www.doubletapammo.com and use the promo code GUNTALK for 10% off your order. Back with the 866 Talk Gun. Here's an interesting question for you. Uh, rather than me pose it, let's let Sabrina do that. She's called in on line three. Sabrina, welcome to Gun Talk. Hey there, how are you? I am well. This is an interesting question. What, what are you thinking here? <laughs> well, um, I am traveling for work as we speak, and this is my first time listening to your show. So I heard this and I thought, well, you got a listener for life now. So my question is, <laughs> yeah, you're stuck with me now. Um, I'm originally from Northeast Indiana, and now I live in Atlanta, Georgia, and mm-hmm. I'm a proud gun owner. Gun order. I didn't used to be. I used to be afraid of guns, and eventually learned to get over that because I was naive. And my question is, what are your thoughts on social media, like Facebook and Instagram, with regard to guns? So, for example, I like to shoot a lot of Travis Pete, and I like to post a lot of those photos through social media because I love what I do, one. And two, I like to be able to have conversation about that. Some of my friends think Mm -hmm. that's great, but I do get a lot of feedback from my friends that say, I'm asking for trouble by advertising that I have weapons. What are your thoughts on that? Hmm. So the concern, let me make sure I understand, the concern is that you're advertising the fact that you have guns. Is that it? Yeah, that's what some of my friends have said. They said that they think I'm asking for trouble by doing that. Well, I understand what they're saying. I understand their concern for you, and that's admirable. They want to make sure that you're safe and all of that. At the same time, uh, you know, about somewhere between a third and 40% of the people in the country own a gun. So I'm not sure that posting pictures of trap shoot and skeet shooting online are going to make you any more of a target than anything else. The other thing it does is, though, it allows you to spread the word of safe and responsible gun ownership and use and how much fun it is to go out and shoot together and go out with a bunch of your friends, whether they're new friends, people you never knew before, but you just got squatted with them, or take out some people that you have known before say, hey, let's all go out to the range and shoot a little bit. In my view, and everybody has to do the balance here, but I, I think the the fun of sharing this experience, that this thing that's important to you, that's a part of who you are, I think that far outweighs any possible issues on the other side. I would agree with you. So it's, it's good to get that feedback. And um, over the next few years as I shoot more and more I'd like to be able to shoot competitively competitively and be able to teach folks how to do that especially mm-hmm. young women that maybe were fearful of a gun like I was when I was younger so I'd like to use it positively uh, versus being afraid to post something that I love that is wonderful uh, I'll tell you what 
We just, we, we also, since you're new here, you don't know, we also produce three television shows about shooting. But the one you want to see is the one we just posted to our YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube and look for Gun Talk Media. Look for Gun Talk Media. We just posted a, a show about the first ever National Ladies Three Gun Shoot. It was in Covington, Georgia, at the range okay. there. And it is, uh, if you like the movie Field of, uh, or uh, I'm sorry, A League of Their Own, great movie. Yeah. That's what this event was. Women came okay. from everywhere as if they were summoned, as if they couldn't stay away. It was like a calling. They were compelled to be there. And the way they explain their experiences there is a way that you can have your friends look at that and go, and, and they'll all say, oh, now I get it. I understand, Sabrina, why you like this so much. Yeah. Well, thank so you. Let me, let, me also, let me also throw this in. Please, please continue to shoot. Please become a certified firearms instructor. We need more women instructors because women tend to gravitate more toward women instructors in shooting. And that's a wonderful thing. And everybody always says you don't really learn anything until you start teaching it. So I would encourage you to very much uh, get involved and become a, an instructor. Okay, I will. Thank you. Thank you. I look forward to hearing from you again now that you're a listener for life. This is great. Thank you, Sabrina. Uh, line two, Thane is with us out of California. Hello, Thane. Hello. Uh, what, what, what I'm calling about is that I whittle gun stocks for friends. I got I had an accident when I was younger and got the hun, knocked 178 feet off top of an overpass. So I'm a little slow. Okay. But anyway, I can I did this gun for this friend of mine, and it's a 264 Remington. Mm-hmm. And it has it had a different kind of a finish that I've never seen before, and it also has a little thing, and it has like a ridge in the middle of the bed where the gun sits. That's just right in the middle of it. It's, it goes into a, almost a razor sharp point. Okay, I, I, let me I'm a, let me stop you before you go too much further because we are going to run out of time. But I know how to help you on this one. I'm not a gunsmith. Don't pretend to be one. But I know the right people. What I need you to do, Thane, is call Brownells, the folks at Brownells. And if you're any kind of a gunsmith at all, uh, you know Brownells. Give them a call this week. Ask to speak to one of their techs. They have all these great gunsmiths who work there. If you don't know the number, just go to brownells.com and explain what's going on. And there'll be somebody there that'll say, oh, yeah, with that particular stock, with that particular finish, with that kind of thing, this is what you need to do. And they can help you. And if you don't have what you need, that's the other part that's great. The folks at Brownells will have what you need, whether it's acro glass or finishing material or you know tongue oil or linseed oil or whatever. I mean, that's the beauty of it. Brownells.com. It's kind of where you go for any kind of information you need. 866-TALK-GUN. listening to a special 4th of July weekend edition of Tom Gresham's Gun Talk. Call Tom now at 866-825-5486 or send an email to tom at guntalk.com. Now, here's Tom. Everybody likes to save money. Everybody likes to get something for free. We have both of those available right now. We kick off this Sunday our new giveaway. We like to do a giveaway. Uh, Nosler, this is the most amazing thing. This is incredible, okay? Uh, Nosler's given away one of their brand new Model 48 Patriot rifles. Great rifle. I mean, really, those guys know how to make good rifles. But it's chambered in the brand new 28 Nosler. That's like 7 millimeter Magnum on steroids. You can also get five boxes of Nosler trophy grade ammunition. Oh, yeah, and might as well. Why not throw it in, right? A, a loophole VX3 scope. Uh, this is pretty incredible. It's a heck of a package here. The 28 Nosler is awesome. We have shot it a fair amount, and it is incredible. It shoots really accurately, but it is a serious magnum out there hunting rig. All you have to do to enter for a chance to win is go to guntalk.com slash win. That's W-I-N. 
uh, guntalk.com slash win and enter for a chance to win that. Also, of course, we have lots of deals going out, some special 4th of July weekend deals on Gun Dealio. You can right now go to Google Play or the uh, Apple App Store and get our free, yes, I said free, smartphone app called Gun Dealio. I've been getting some alerts from it. Of special deals for the 4th of July, you can save a ton of money. I already had people saying, I've saved $30 on this thing. I just got it. This is, this is really cool. So, yeah, just pick up Gun Delio, G-U-N-D-E-A-L-I-O, like, what's the dealio? Well, it's a Gun Delio. So, GunDelio.com has all the information, GunDelio.com. Cindy's on line one out of Baker City, Oregon. Cindy, thank you for calling in. How are you? I'm doing fine. How are you doing today? I'm good. How can I help you? I like guns. You know, I believe in the NRA. You know, I believe Mm -hmm. in hunting. But I do not own a gun. What if someone was to come up onto me, and I'm not a black belt, I went to a course, teach me how to self-defend myself. Okay. Like in martial arts and turn them over and flip them upside down. Mm -hmm. Would I have to have a lawyer present if I killed them? If you kill them with using martial arts, do you think that you're a good enough martial arts person to kill somebody with martial arts? Yes. I haven't got a gun, but just, you know, because guns are trying to go out with the cowboys. I'm sorry, say that again? I'm thinking self-defense. Guns. Yeah, you said gun? Guns are going out, the old cowboys. And I realize we still have the NRA, whenever. What mm-hmm. would be, what would happen? Well, to your, to your question, I think if you're truly uh, defending yourself against an attack, then you are going to be on solid legal ground. Uh, so I don't think that's going to be a problem. I would say use whatever training you can have. Uh, certainly you want to avoid the situation if at all possible. Avoid it. Uh, get away from it. If you have to defend yourself, then use whatever you have at hand. I am curious, though, about your statement about guns went out with the Cowboys when you know that millions of people use guns in self-defense every year in the U.S., so... It doesn't sound to me like guns have gone out with the Cowboys. It sounds to me like people are using guns to protect themselves a lot. What do you, what do you think? If you shoot somebody, you had your little lawyer on there, you know, and then you got to have a lawyer present where the police are arresting you. Mm-hmm. There. And then you got to clear well, I mean, yourself. There's no free lunch. If you hurt someone with anything, firearm, a baseball bat, a golf club, whatever, there's a very good chance you will be subjected to examination by the legal system. They're going to want to know, okay, how did this happen? Who was after who? Was this really a case of self-defense or was it not? Or did you just decide to take a baseball bat to somebody and bash him in the head? That's what the whole process is about. It's figuring out what happened, who's responsible, should we charge somebody, should we not charge someone. So, I mean, in terms of you know legal aspect, those of us who carry guns take it very responsibly. We take it very seriously, and we decide, okay, we're going to make sure that we are prepared from the front end to the back end, and that includes being prepared on the legal side if and when we get there, hoping that we never, ever, ever have to get there. But in terms of, of your situation, if you think that you are uh, a Bruce Lee enough, uh, go ahead, do what you got to do. I would I would offer one thought. I would ask you to please go to a martial arts school and let somebody there with training uh, just check you out and make sure. I think you may find that you're overdriving your headlights just a little bit. And I, I appreciate the call there, Cindy. A line four, Tony is in Oakdale, California. Hello, Tony. You're on Gun Talk. Hello, Tom. Good morning. Hello. Hey there. I'm with the, uh, I'm in Oakdale. Our slogan is Cowboy Capital of the World. I'm one of the cowboys that still have a few guns hanging around. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How can I help you? I've got a question for you. Um, about a year or so ago, uh, my uncle of mine passed down his M1 Grand to me, and I've loved shooting that for target practice. It's been great. 
and I've been thinking about getting something as a hunting rifle, and I'm really interested in the Springfield uh, M1A versus mm-hmm. the M1A mm-hmm. Scout. And okay. I'm just, a question for you is, what do you, what's your thoughts on the difference between those two for hunting and also just about collectability and retaining their value throughout the years? Okay, I mean, I don't, I think collectability is out the window. There's nothing really particularly collectible about them. These are just guns that are being made now. They will not appreciate in value any more than any other gun will. I would throw that out the window. I wouldn't even consider it. Only buy something if you think, okay, I'm going to use this a lot and really have a good time with it. Now, I, it would be my thought that there are, as great as the M1A is, it would not be my choice for hunting. And there are people who are going to use it. And if you say, I just want to hunt with it because I think it's cool, that's great. But understand, it's a heavy rifle. It's a lot to carry around. You're shooting a 308. What would you be hunting with it? Um, I'm trying to get into deer. Uh, I've been I've been doing some pig a lot, uh, but I'm trying mm-hmm. to get into some bigger game. And and I'll be honest, I just think the M1As are pretty cool. It's a, it's a nice okay. high quality that, gun. That's a good enough reason. They are high quality. Uh, here's the thing to understand: the Scout with the short barrel is one loud son of a gun. That short barrel is really really loud. It's handy, easy to carry around. But if you're going to go ahead and saddle yourself with a heavy rifle, which the M1A is, I would get the longer version. I would probably go with that. Just you're going to have a little bit more velocity out there, and it's not going to be as loud. The other thing is I would seriously consider with almost anything these days. I've, I've about got to the point where I don't even want to hunt without wearing hearing protection of some sort. This is one of the reasons for the electronic muffs and plugs are so great. So just I, I throw that thought out for you. You're not going to go wrong with either of the M1As. Ultimately, as it often does, it's going to come down to personal preference. Alien Gear Holsters, the most comfortable concealable holsters on the planet, introduces the Cloak Tuck 3.0 IWB Holster. This all new concealed carry holster improves the original design with a sturdy spring steel and ballistic nylon core covered with a soft neoprene backing for ultimate comfort. You have to try this holster to believe it. Get yours now for as low as $43.88 at aliengearholsters.com. If you're looking for a safe and trusted way to sell your firearms, look no further than Dury's Gun Shop. I trusted them to sell my dad's collection. They built their business for over 50 years on honesty and customer service. Dury's Guns will buy any size collection or estate, none too big or too small. Selling your firearms to Dury's Guns is easy. Go with the pros. I trust Dury's Guns. Dury'sGuns.com. In the fight for gun rights, we need ammunition, intellectual ammunition. And no one does it better than researcher John Lott, author of More Guns, Less Crime. John created the Crime Prevention Research Center to counter the junk studies being done to push gun control. But he doesn't have the big bucks of billionaires like Michael Bloomberg. All he has is us. So I'm asking for your help. Go to crimeresearch.org and donate what you can. This research makes all the difference. People ask what they can do to help preserve the Second Amendment. Honestly, this is one of the best moves you can make. If you can give a lot, that's great. But even the cost of a box of ammo helps. We need John Lott's intellectual ammunition. Go to crimeresearch.org. It's time to step up. Crimeresearch.org. In the field or on the range, you need a trigger you can trust. For over 60 years, Timney triggers have been trusted by hunters and shooters everywhere. A Timney trigger could mean the difference between a great shot and a miss. Timney triggers are proudly made in the USA and come with a lifetime warranty. To order, go to TimneyTriggers.com. That's T-I-M-N-E-Y Triggers.com. Okay, yes, yes, yes. I know it's our app, and I'm, but I'm still jazzed about it. I had my uh, Gun Dealio app running, but, but once you get it, you just leave it running all the time. And I, I 
pulled into the parking lot of a gun store. Was it? No, Friday. Uh, no, Saturday morning. Saturday morning. Pulled into the parking lot of a gun store, and I get this shotgun, pump action shotgun sound. It goes chuk, chuk, and it's my phone. And I look at it, and it's a notification from Gundelio with a special deal. The thing about Gundelio is, yes, it you can see a list of all the great deals, but it also, when you go into a gun store, it knows and it triggers, and it offers you special deals, and you can just walk up to the store and buy this stuff and get the good prices on it because you know about stuff. I got to tell you, if you're a gun store, if you work at a gun store, you got to have this thing because... There are promotions out there all the time from the manufacturers, whether it's you know, Loophole or Burris or Zeiss or Swarovski or Remington, Smith & Wesson, Ruger, doesn't matter. They all have these deals going, and you can't keep up with all of them. But if you had this and somebody's looking at a particular gun, you can say, wait a minute, let me check on that. And you pull out your app and go, yeah, you know what? You can send in, if you buy this, you can send in this form, and you can get two free magazines. In fact, I just, what was I? Oh, just look at the Springfield Army website. Just look at this. Uh, they have a special deal going right now. An XDS, summer, a single stack summer special, they call it. When you buy the XDS, you get three magazines in one mag pouch. How are you going to know that stuff? Gun Delio. Gun Delio tells you about that. So pick up your free copy of Gun Delio. Go to the App Store or Google Play. It works on Androids or iPhones for you. There you go. Save some money. Well, you're like me. You're not going to save any money. You're just going to buy more stuff. But that's okay, too. <laughs> Line three. Terry's in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. Hello, Terry. Talk well, to good me. Good afternoon. Thanks for taking my call. All righty. Uh, I, uh, about two years ago, lost the use of my left eye because of a strange form of cancer. And I'm mm-hmm. left-handed, shot from the left side, haven't uh, picked mm-hmm. up a gun since then, and uh, want to get back into it. Do you think I would be better off continuing to uh, uh, shoot from the, with my left hand, or would it be more practical to uh, try to learn everything from the right side? Okay. Uh, you may know that I am right-handed and left-eye dominant. So what's happened to you is you have now become left-handed and right-eye dominant because you don't have the vision in your left eye. Right. So I, w- I can only share with you what I do. I shoot with my left eye, I shoot handguns right-handed and long guns left-handed. Hmm, so okay. I think you can continue to shoot just fine with your left hand. Shoot left-handed because you've got all that, you know, I don't know if it's muscle memory, but you know how to shoot left-handed. And all you're going to have to do, let me just practice it for a second. I'm doing this. Okay. When you put your gun up, you take your, uh, move your nose about 30 degrees to the left. Just swivel on your head. It's going to bring your right eye in line with the sights. Okay. All right. So that'll work. Now, on long guns, you pretty much got to go up to the other shoulder. And uh, my suggestion on that would be, yeah, that's a good idea. Jim says, how about you also get a laser? That also helps, too on the handguns, particularly for defensive stuff. But on long okay. guns, just get get a gun that you can shoulder all the time in the house, whether it's a BB gun or an unloaded gun, that you can just pick it up and shoulder it. If you shoulder it to your right shoulder uh, one, two, three thousand times, it'll start to become very comfortable and it won't feel okay. awkward to you anymore. Okay? Outstanding. Outstanding. I appreciate your help. Absolutely. I appreciate it, and uh, good luck with that. I hope that works out for you, Tony. Uh, or that was Texas Terry. Let's see here. We are, yes, we're still, I guess we're okay. We're on, on time, guys? Got about a minute? Okay. All right, we can do this. John, Baton Rouge, line two. I got a minute for you, John. Go for it. Okay, what do you think? We've, we've got a couple of 500 Smith & Wessons. We want to we want to convert one to, we want Smith & Wesson to uh, give us a Smith and, uh, 500 model with a barrel not bored, everything else fine, the cylinder not bored. We're gonna we're gonna turn it into a three hundred short short magnum. Ain't gonna happen. Why? That's I, if I'm Smith and Wesson, and it, I, wait wait wait, if I'm Smith and Wesson, and you tell me, hey, I want to take one of your guns, and I want to make it into something you've never tested. You've never run any test on this, but I you I want you to sell it to me with the full knowledge of what I'm gonna do to it, and you have the liability for it, Smith and Wesson. But we're going to do all of this, and you never test it. It ain't going to happen. Their lawyers would hogtie everybody in their office and wouldn't let them out. It just, just forget it. It's not going to happen. So it just, uh, 
you know, you may be able to buy one and rebarrel it yourself and maybe manufacture your own cylinder, do what you got to do on that. But in terms of them providing it to you with a uh, barrel that's not bored out, I don't see that happening. I think you'll have to buy your own barrel to put that together. All right, 866-TALK-GUN. Your comments. What do you do when you get to a hotel room? How do you ensure your safety? All right, back with you. 866-TALK-GUN gets you in there. Jerry's on line one out of Texas. Hey, Jerry, you're up. Uh, Yes, sir, Tom. I just had a quick question for you. By the way, I mm-hmm. loved your dad's TV show back in the 70s. Oh, thank you. Uh, the question I've got, I've got a, I just yesterday bought a Ruger American, the compact with the short barrel, mm-hmm. and the threaded, threaded barrel on it, 5.56. And okay. uh, um, would like a suggestion on a a scope for that thing and what power uh, using it up here in the panhandle where we've got all these open spaces. But it's be uh, you know what, I, I would probably sure I understand. You're in your lab. Are you calling in coyotes or how are you getting them? Coyote, yeah, coyotes. Hopefully, get some hog hunting done. Okay. But, uh, I would I would lean toward probably like a one to four or a one and a half to five or a two to six ballpark um, because that one to one and a half if you call in a coyote and I mean sometimes they can run in on you and they're at uh, fifteen yards and boy that'll startle you if you got your scope turned up to six you're going to be hosed because you can't find him in the scope get it down to that low power but you crank it up to four five or six and you can make a three hundred yard shot with no problem so. I would tend to go to that. If you want a little bit more magnification, then you've always got the standard three to nine, which everybody loves. It's pretty hard to go wrong with yeah, that. I've got, a, I've got a couple of them. I just I keep reading about these one to four, one to fives. That they're kind of appealing to me. And, I tell you uh, what, if you do it, uh, get a, one of those, a one to four, one to five, something in that range. Put it on, use it for a month, and then give me a call and let me know what you think. I think you are going to say, wow, this is very cool. That's the way it hit me. When I started using them, I fell in love. I've used a, like a two to five for 25 years, and it's kind of my go-to on everything. So I love that low-power magnification range. So there you go. Appreciate the call. Dale's in Montana on line four. Dale, I got one minute for you, so dive into it, please. Okay, I'm interested in uh, finding out if there's studies on extreme temperature. Does that affect ballistics? Because our country here, we uh, have uh, hunting uh, temperatures from 80 to uh, 20 below zero. And if, Yes, uh, they're, 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 the, the answer to your question is yes. There have been a number of studies done on that. Uh, with a little bit of Internet searching, you can come up with the information. There are, are even apps for your smartphone that will show you trajectory differences with temperature differences. One of the things that happens is that the powder in your cartridges reacts differently. You know, when you burn powder, it's a chemical reaction. And heat is one of the factors, or temperature, rather, is one of the factors in chemical reactions, the speed of the reaction. So if the round is very hot, then you're going to have a faster uh, chemical reaction, more pressure, more velocity. And if the round is very cold, you're going to have lower velocity, which is going to give you a different trajectory. But yes, there are apps out there that will take care of that, will you know, let you just basically plug it in. You can say, hey, I'm shooting 308, this load, this thing, and here's the temperature, and it gives you your drop tables. It's, it's amazing. It's stunning how good these things are. How The technology we have available now is quite something, isn't it? It's, it is something. I mean, all the way from red dot sights to uh, lasers to lights. Yeah, that, by the way, if you haven't seen that video of the two po- Texas police officers that ended up having to shoot this guy when he unfortunately pulled out a BB gun, it looked like a Beretta, uh, but the fact that they had the white light and a laser on the guns is what really got my attention. They did a good job. They did it right. They were professional. 
The other thing that got my attention is how many times they shoot. How many times have I told you this? We find with our first person defender series, people shoot pretty much all the ammo. Six, seven, eight shots is nothing. It's bang, 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 it's done. Which makes you kind of go back and say, hmm, maybe I ought to go rethink that whole double stack, single stack thing. And maybe I ought to be carrying more ammo. We'll talk about it.